Sometimes when you have a perfectly operating vehicle, you want to do things to jeopardize that. So today, I'm going to wire some of these onto one of these. What could go wrong other than small electrical fires? Let's find out. Part of being an idiot is spending your hard-earned cash on a depreciating asset, which is why I decided to trade in my 2011 Mustang on a 2023 Bronco Badlands. I actually use four-wheel drives in their environment. I crawl rocks, and I've already had this one up to the deserts of Las Cruces, New Mexico, as well as the uh, mountains up around Leadville, Colorado. I intend to do more things with it. I've already installed a 10,000-pound Badland underbumper winch, hidden winch, 35-inch uh, tires, 1-inch leveling kit, and a few other doodads. So the Badlands comes with a optional, well, not optional on Badlands, optional on the other trim levels, auxiliary switch panel up by the headliner, I've already used one of these switches, I'll show you in a moment. Today we're going to wire in another one of the switches to add a couple of pod lights on brackets under the modular steel bumper. Let's find out what we can screw up. So the auxiliary switch panel is pretty neat on these new Broncos. I think Jeeps have similar things as well. But they have a rack of switches up here. And if yours has these, these are super handy because they're pre-wired throughout the vehicle. Uh, they all terminate under the hood. And then there's actually wiring segments built into the car. For example, if you wanted to run an accessory to the back tailgate, there's a wire already installed in the harness that you can pick up from under the hood that goes back to the tailgate. Today, we're just going to pick up one of these for auxiliary six. We're going to wire it to be the front pod lights. That will go into a harness that's underneath the dash. We'll go fine. It's supposed to be, I believe, yellow and orange. Uh, the only other switch I've wired up so far is number one. Number one is your highest amperage. It's rated 30 amps. These are each 10 amps. This one's 15, that one's 30. I wired up to 30 to provide power to my winch. That makes sense to me because the winch is located in a hidden mount underneath the bumper and I've already had it in water and I didn't like the idea of having um, unfused voltage going down from the battery to that winch. So I wired in a heavy duty 500 amp relay that Auxiliary One controls. We'll look at that here in a second. Under the hood, back by the firewall, right down here, you see all those colored wires. Those are loose wires coming out of the harness that are color keyed to those auxiliary switches. The only one I've picked up so far is the yellow one here, and that's the 30 amp from auxiliary one. As I said, this here is a 500 amp relay, so it's energized by that switch. This lead goes to the uh, battery. This lead goes down to the winch. So when I hit the switch, power then goes underneath down to the winch, which is way down there. As you can see, it definitely gets prone to be in the water, which isn't good for the winch no matter how you slice it. But not having the power running to it is kind of a plus. But today, we're going to pick up one of these wires. I'm going to double check, but I think it's that uh, yellow red one there on the right and we're going to use that as a power feed up to our uh, new pod fog lights so i did just check yellow orange is the 10 amp switch that goes to the fog lights at uh, auxiliary switch six these lamps i got off amazon they're pretty cheap 40 bucks each pulled 2.4 amps each so my total load will be 4.8 amps on a 10 amp switch so i'm not going to run a power relay i'm just going to wire them direct see how that works Worst that could happen is we let the smoke out of the wires or I find out if the fuse is good. Let's, uh, let's proceed to seeing how we're going to mount these. So when I put on the 35-inch tires and the 1-inch leveling lift, I removed the factory crash bars, which are mounted right to this bar and extend out. Those are pretty much required to remove if you're going to run anything bigger than 35s. They are a safety feature, though, so you weigh your decision carefully. I've removed mine front and rear. This bracket... I've already bolted in place. I got the brackets off of Amazon. They pick up the two bolt mounts from the crash bar. The ones that came with the bracket were designed to just go into the top holes here and then thread a nut through the tube underneath. That was way too hard. I don't have monkey fingers. So I just went to the hardware store, got the same thread pitch bolts, but in the longer length so that they would go all the way through to the welded nuts at the bottom much simpler to install those than the factory ones. So you can see now we have this nice flat mounting surface with three holes. You can add up to three pod lights to this bracket. We're only going to go with one today, see how that goes. 
And later on, if I like it, I could add so many lights, I'll look like a disco ball. But enough people are doing that to their Broncos, so let's try to keep things functional, shall we? So if you're gonna do some wiring on your Bronco, or your Buick, or whatever hoopty you choose to drive, do yourself a favor and get the right tools for the job. That means a soldering iron, shrink tubing, and of course, decent wiring, and a pair of strippers. Now you're going to want to do the easy thing. You're going to want to use these. You're going to want to use these stupid crimp-on connectors. Just don't do it. Don't do it. You're not in third grade anymore. You put up your crayons. Say no. Push those away. You don't need those. Get the soldering iron. Make your connections correctly. Use a little flux and some solder. Slide some heat shrink over it. Seal it up from the weather. Call it a day. These are prone to fall out, have corrosion and bad connections, too much resistance. This is good. Bad? Good. Got it? All right, let's get started. And a few seconds later, I've got the end of that wire stripped. So now we're going to move on to the wire we're going to attach to it. A lot of people like to use the same color wires, but that just means you're going to have a whole bucket full of wiring on your workbench. I tend to use black, which is usually what you use for ground wires, but this is my car. I know what they do. I know how to test wires. Um, black's easier to hide and it's less conspicuous. Use whatever color you want. So we're going to go with the black wire. I've stripped the end off of that. Now select the proper size shrink tubing and put that over the wire before you splice them together. So now that's already on the wire and I don't have to worry about remembering it later because you definitely want to have that before you do your soldering. We'll slide it up the wire. So now there's a couple different ways to put the wire together. Different uh, purposes require different styles. This will not have any tension on it so what I'm going to do is simply shove the two ends together. I'm going to butt them together and then once they're butted together I'll just put a little twist on them and keep them pretty much straight and in line so they're not a big bulge. That way the shrink tube will slide right over it. If they were going to have any sort of binding or any sort of pressure applied to the wires, you might want to do a fold and twist. But again, this is going to be a very low stress area. I'm not going to put any tension on the wires. I want to keep them small and thin. So let's get these twisted together and get the flux on them. We've got this, the wire soldered. Yeah, it's not pretty, but that's the beauty of uh, heat shrink. It'll cover all of your uh, sloppiness. So now we slide the heat shrink down the wire and get it over. And then we will hit it with the flame torch and make it shrink. Okay, we successfully threaded our wire down from inside the fender. So before we get too froggy, I want to test fit the, uh, the actual light and see how it's going to clear. I want to try to keep the wiring where it goes in into the up position, both for aesthetic reasons and perhaps to avoid some water intrusion issues. So let's uh, test fit this up to the bracket and see how this is going to fit, look, how we can run the wire later. You need a couple of hands here apparently. So we're gonna drop that in there, let's rotate it down. All right, let's put a nut and bolt on that and uh, kind of get an idea of how that's going to look. We do have the larger LEDs at the bottom, the smaller at the top, which is probably good because this seems like it's going to be a little tight on the bumper opening. We test fitted the light. I got a pretty good angle on it. We're going to go with the first hole and I have preset the side bracket screws on the thing to the angle. I think it's pretty close. So now we're going to cut and solder power wires. We're going to have to make this a three-way because we're going to pick it up to go over to the other side of the bumper as well. So first thing we need to do is cut that wire fairly short. Let's go a little shorter, about there. And let's get our wire strippers. And let's see if we can strip that down. Okay. The wires have been twisted together, the red positive from the lamp and then the black feed coming from up above the switch wire and another black extension that we're gonna take over to the other side of the vehicle. The black hanging there, of course, is the ground for the lamp. We will deal with that momentarily. So these are all twisted and flexed. I've got my heat shrink further on up the harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this and get the heat shrink on it. 
Okay, all the connections are soldered and heat shrinked, including the ground. Probably a little overkill, but you know, got to keep those grounds well protected. So I put a long wire on that one as well, so we can run the ground separately in a moment. So what I want to do now is just real quick patch up the ground and attach the fog light to the bracket and make sure that uh, the switch and the wiring are working before we move over to the other side. So uh, let's get this thing bolted into position and uh, patch in the ground real quick and see what happens. All right, accessories are on. Switch is on. Let's come out here. And uh, yeah, yeah, the lights are on there. So there's the fog light. Let's touch the ground wire to a good ground. Whoa. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a success. Okay, got the other side all uh, spliced together, soldered and heat shrinked. Got the uh, wire ran over the top of the bumper supports and I added way back there in the dark, you can see kind of a zip tie through a hole and a cross member just to keep the tension on that wire to keep her from falling down into anything troublesome. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and peg this light in place and get both these two grounds attached and then we'll see how everything's looking. Okay, got them both installed. Everything went pretty easily. I found a good uh, bolt that went to the uh, frame and the bumper, picked up the grounds on those ran the wire across behind and zip tied it up so it won't fall down so that looks pretty good so let's go hit the switch and see how these things do there they are both seem to be working i'm sure i'll need to do some adjustment when it gets a little darker but right now they both look pretty good so that was a pretty easy upgrade uh you know the all the wiring was in place uh, all the connections were pretty easy to do. Ford did the lion's share of work with that pre-wiring the auxiliary switches, so that works great. Um, again, these uh, combined fog lamps are not even quite 5 amps. It should do fine on a 10 amp circuit. Hopefully that doesn't change. If it does, I will rectify this video and let you know. In the meantime, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, when it gets dark, we'll actually do some alignment and some adjustment on them. But uh, if you have a Bronco and you're just wanting to upgrade and use those switches this is a pretty simple easy cheap way to do it so uh and look nothing's on fire so if an idiot like me can do it you can do it have fun see you on the trails